All right, I know the title of this video sounds absolutely insane because the iPhone 13 hasn't even been revealed yet, but seeing as John Prosser's incredible leak of the iPhone 14 Pro's design hit number five on Twitter's trending list, I know a lot of people are asking this question. Because in reality, many of the details surrounding the iPhone 13 have already been leaked, including the design with the new smaller notch and everything like that. But the iPhone 14 design leaks are showing the biggest change we've seen to the iPhone in many, many years. And of course, you probably shouldn't be making major financial decisions based on leaks, especially ones that are an entire year out, but if you're kind of unsure about buying the iPhone 13 in the first place, the insane iPhone 14 leaks that I'm gonna be analyzing in this video could be enough to get you to wait it out for another year. And I'll help you make that decision at the end of this video. So before I get into what I think about each little detail that John leaked, and if I think it makes sense from Apple's perspective, I wanna quickly mention our new M1X chip t-shirt design, which you can find in our merch shelf right below this video. Now before we begin, I wanna mention that John Prosser successfully leaked the design of various Apple products months before they were actually revealed, like Apple's AirTags, which ended up looking exactly like his renders, or the AirPods Max, which looked incredibly similar, or the multicolored iMac design leak that was really close to the real deal, except for the missing chin. Don't forget that he showed us the iPhone 13 smaller notch way back in December of last year. He also showed us the design of the Apple Watch Series 7 months ago, which many analysts now agree on, and the same thing goes for the design of the iPad Mini 6 that we're expecting to come soon. So when it comes to design leaks, John Prosser has some pretty reliable sources. He doesn't always get every detail right, but he gets close. Now, as far as these new iPhone 14 design leaks, I know there are some incredible changes, like the flush glass back with no camera bump, as well as the single hole punch camera on the front, but I wanna get started with other details, like John claiming that it's gonna have a titanium finish. First off, I wanna make it clear that the titanium finish will likely only be available on the Pro models, since that's one of the ways Apple differentiates the regular models from the higher end ones. So there's a good chance that the low end iPhone 14 will stick with aluminum, but maybe I'm wrong, who knows? But if you think the whole titanium finish is totally random, it's not. Way back in January, Apple filed for patents that include using a new titanium alloy for various products like MacBooks, iPads, iPhones, and Apple Watches. And the whole point of that is that it would allow Apple to make thinner devices while maintaining the same durability and probably giving it better micro scratch resistance. A month after that, another patent was filed by Apple for anti-fingerprint coatings for future titanium devices. And then in July, another report came out claiming that the iPhone 14 Pro models will feature a titanium alloy chassis, so they totally agree with John. And finally, last month, Digitimes claimed that Apple is working on future iPads with titanium alloy chassis designs, so it seems like Apple wants to switch all of their products over to this new alloy in the future. But as far as John Prosser's iPhone 14 titanium finish leak, I totally agree with them, and I think it's gonna help make it feel more premium than ever before. Now moving on to the next piece of info, we have those wild looking speaker grills or slots on the bottom of the iPhone 14 Pro. Since it was a bit difficult to see the close up details from his video, I headed over to his website, frontpagetech.com and scrolled all the way down to the bottom of the iPhone 14 leak article and I downloaded the full res images which are available to the public. And taking a closer look, you can see that the speaker slots have a very fine mesh grill inside of them and this closely resembles the speaker grills on the old iPhone 4, which John says the iPhone 14 design is based on. Now, I personally think that this is gonna be a pretty awesome change, and because of the stronger titanium alloy finish, you shouldn't really worry about the thin metal areas surrounding the speakers bending or breaking, and I think Apple is gonna use this opportunity to make the speakers sound much better than they currently do. But the interesting detail to notice is that the leaked renders and CAD files of the Apple Watch Series 7 from John also include these long speaker slots 
that are kind of similar to what John showed us with the iPhone 14. So maybe Apple is going that route for the speakers on both of those products. Now, as far as those circular volume buttons, John says that they're there because Apple seems to be going retro again. So maybe Apple is gonna mix it up with those new buttons. But I personally prefer the current volume buttons because they seem more convenient, but I guess we'll see. Now, as far as the iPhone 14 keeping the same lightning port, it makes perfect sense for Apple because it doesn't seem like they have polished their MagSafe technology enough to the point where they can ditch the lightning connector because they're gonna need to charge very fast and the MagSafe is gonna have to transfer data, which I'm sure they're gonna solve in the near future. But now getting into the biggest design changes, let's start with the completely flush single piece of glass on the back that doesn't have any kind of camera bump. The glass part of it seems totally believable because Apple is already doing this with the front glass on the 24 inch iMac, which extends further than the metal chassis, except it's definitely gonna be a bit more risky in terms of dropping your iPhone 14. But the detail about the camera bumps being completely flush is the hardest part to believe because it would require the iPhone to be a lot thicker to fully encompass the notch and make it flush. And what makes this difficult is that the iPhone 13 Pro is rumored to have a notch that sticks out even more than the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and that could easily carry over to the 14. On top of that, Ming-Chi Kuo claimed that the iPhone 14 Pro will come with a new 48 megapixel sensor with 8K video recording, which definitely doesn't help make the camera modules any less thick. But John did say that the iPhone 14 is gonna be a very thick phone compared to what we have now with the iPhone 12 models, and I guess there's a chance that Apple could somehow free up space on the inside of the iPhone to allow the camera to sit a bit deeper into the phone than before, but who knows. However, there are some other leakers like Maury QHD on Twitter who disagree with John about the totally flush cameras on the back of the iPhone 14. But moving on, finally, we have the biggest change, which is the notchless display with a single hole punch camera layout, which is probably one of the most controversial details that John leaked for a couple of different reasons. First off, Apple usually has a three year redesign cycle for major design changes, like the full redesign with the iPhone 6, the full redesign with the iPhone 10, and the flat side redesign with the iPhone 12. So if Apple kept that cycle going, that would mean that the iPhone 15 in 2023 would be getting the next big redesign. But John claims that Apple is gonna break the cycle and do it a full year earlier than expected. And in my recent video about the iPhone 13's smaller notch, I mentioned that it would be weird for Apple to redesign the notch this year and then do it again the very next year because if you think about it, Apple milked the current notch for four years in a row and people still bought the iPhone 12 in record numbers. So I basically predicted that Apple could keep the iPhone 13 smaller notch for another year and then switch to the hole punch design with the iPhone 15, but I may actually be wrong for a couple of different reasons. First off, what if Apple realized that they're far behind the competition in terms of the notch, so they've gotta act sooner than later to get rid of it, and that would totally make sense. But going even further, the reliable analyst Ming-Chi Kuo mentioned back in March that some 2022 iPhone 14 models could abandon the notch in favor of the punch hole display design. So I guess if Apple kept the notch on the lower end iPhone 14 models, but switched to a hole punch on the Pro models, that would greatly help differentiate them because if you think about it, the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro have barely any differences right now. So Apple needs something else to keep the Pro model exclusive and worth the extra cash. And on top of that, there are rumors that Apple is ditching the mini sized model next year and replacing it with another 6.7 inch max sized model. So Apple will essentially have two 6.7 inch iPhones, the iPhone 14 Max and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And if this happens, the whole punch display panel would be perfect to help differentiate the two models. And guess what just happened? Ross Young, a display analyst on Twitter, actually confirmed that theory with a chart he revealed back in June, showing the punch hole display on the iPhone 14 Pro models 
and a notch on the regular models to help differentiate them. Going even further, Mark Gurman himself actually mentioned that the smaller notch on the iPhone 13 will be followed by an even smaller notch on the iPhone 14. And in my opinion, the only way that makes sense is if Apple goes with the hole punch design. And finally, Mori QHD on Twitter, the same guy who disagreed about the flush cameras, actually agreed with John about the new notchless display panel, which he says he leaked a week ago. And this shows the new speaker grill at the top of the display, which matches up to the expected grill on the iPhone 13. So if Apple is going with the hole punch design like John showed off, the way they're gonna be doing it is by integrating all of the Face ID sensors into one large sensor, just like they've already done with the LiDAR scanner on the back of the iPhone 12 Pro, and then placing that new sensor directly underneath the display. And if Apple isn't able to pull that off by next year for whatever reason, there's a chance they'll go with a dual hole punch design, which was recently leaked by Shrimp Apple Pro. But nevertheless, these new renders by Ian Zelbo are absolutely amazing, so definitely go and give him a follow on Twitter. And by the way, he says he's very confident in these design details because they're based on a combination of real images, CAD files, and schematics. And with all that said, let's finish off with the original question. Should you wait for the iPhone 14 or just buy the iPhone 13, which will be revealed in less than a week. Well, if you really don't mind the notch, you also prefer a thinner iPhone, and you really want the new 120Hz display and other features like portrait video recording, then you'll probably be happy with the iPhone 13. Going further, if you're not planning on buying the more expensive Pro model, then there's even less reason to wait because there's a good chance the lower iPhone 14 models will continue to have the same notch as the iPhone 13 instead of having a hole punch display. But if you're totally happy with your current iPhone and you're kind of on the fence about the 13, I would honestly suggest waiting for the iPhone 14 Pro because that is gonna have the biggest redesign we've seen in years and it's going to help it hold its value much better compared to previous notched iPhones since it'll be coming with features like the new titanium chassis, the flush back glass, the new speaker grill layout, the hole punch display, and massively upgraded cameras like a 48 megapixel sensor that can shoot 8K video. So hopefully you learned something new from this video, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle bell to subscribe for more videos like this one, and definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.